Okay, I'll tell you a little bit of background about Nina. I bought her from a cattle rancher, I can't remember his name now, in Caramels, the small town near Soyuz, BC. And I actually bought Nina as a puppy because I tried to adopt, I wanted to, I was preferring to adopt a puppy through the BCSPCA. And some of you may know this, I might have told you, but the BCSPCA turned me down uh, to adopt a dog although that was my first choice. So it's kind of by chance that I happened to find Nina. She uh, was born to a litter, to a working cattle dog, a Border Collie Kelpie Cross, and both are hardworking, intelligent dogs. And so I thought that was a good fit for me. Four puppies in the litter. There were two brown and white females and two black and white males. And I went and I saw the puppies in the barn there and they were in, uh, a little pen with straw bales and I chose Nina <laughs> and I paid $600 for her and brought her home and uh, ever since then we've been having as much adventures as we can possibly do. It's okay. It's been a fun ride so far. Uh, I tried my best to train her at the beginning. She's not the most highly trained dog in the world. She's just intelligent, loves the outdoors. And in fact, she kind of functions better on a trail than she does in the city, uh, on the sidewalk uh, with a lot of people and cars and traffic. I, I also prefer to be out on a trail in the mountains. So we've been a good fit for each other. I also chose not to get Nina a spade, so one day I hope uh, we find a suitable male that she can breed with and uh, it'd be really fun to have puppies. It would be fantastic to uh, possibly keep Nina's offspring and so I can keep her bloodline. It's kind of rare these days when dogs are not spayed or neutered. You know, 95 plus percent of the dogs I come across are spayed or neutered. So she's a little bit different that way. I haven't taken her through any special training. She's just, we started really young. I mean, I started that same winter she was a puppy. I started taking her out in the back country. You know, maybe I was advancing too quickly, but she handled it really well. We went ski touring and uh, then I got a mountain bike and we started biking like mad. And that was in Penticton. She always stays nearby or with an earshot. She, even if she goes ahead of you on the trail, she comes right back to you and checks up on you to make sure you're still there if you stopped or something. And so she's really intelligent that way. She's very trainable. In fact, she's probably capable of much more than I have uh, trained her for already. Uh, one thing Nina loves, she absolutely is obsessed with the water. Take her anywhere near water and she wants to be right in that water immediately. Um, she wants to chase sticks and jump uh, into the water and swim and uh, that's where you really see how energetic she is. She just is like bursting with energy and 
barking and running all over the place. <laughs> Took her a little time to discover her love for the water, but once she uh, once she found her way in, she was head over heels in love with the water. I think I should have brought bug spray. <laughs> this is wild. Just in the Canadian savanna here, the Canadian outback, we've got 50 bug species. She's fairly good around other dogs, although she can be fairly intense because of her uh, competitive nature. She's one of the most competitive dogs I've ever met. Biting the snow, so if you throw snow in the air, or you've got a shovel and you're shoveling snow, she's addicted to that too. It's like uh, her crack cocaine, the snow and the water. And I chose the name Nina because it means strong. Dogs make for fantastic companions, and I couldn't have picked a better one. I feel blessed to have Nina in my life. Mm-hmm. <laughs>